You're watching Just Bar 24. I am Asaba Bhatt with National News Bulletin. Gujarat government has decided to appoint 10,000 visiting teachers in government as well as granted primary schools to overcome the shortage of teachers in the state. The decision has been taken ahead of resumption of offline education in schools from tomorrow and also to ensure that offline education does not get affected due to non-availability of teachers in primary schools following COVID. The government has allocated 10.50 crore rupees to fill the vacant posts. The offline education will resume in the state in 100% capacity from tomorrow. The visiting teacher scheme was introduced in the state through a government resolution in the academic session 2015-16 to ensure that vacant teaching posts and long leaves taken by teachers do not affect the teaching in the schools. India's COVID vaccination coverage has crossed 175 crore 33 lakh mark. Health Ministry said more than 27 lakh 47 thousand vaccine doses were administered yesterday. More than 1 crore 89 lakh precaution doses for the identified categories of beneficiaries like healthcare workers, frontline workers and people over 60 years have been administered so far. India won the right to host the 2023 IOC session in Mumbai. This will be the second time India hosts an IOC session. Having done so, in 1983 in New Delhi, India won the bid unopposed at the 139th IOC session that was held in Beijing, China on the sidelines of the Winter Olympics. Olympic gold medalist Abhinav Bindra, IOC member Neeta Ambani, IOA President Narinder Batra and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur presented India's proposal for the hosting rights at this year's IOC session. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed happiness that India has been chosen to host the 2023 International Olympic Committee IOC session. In a tweet, Modi expressed confidence that it will be a memorable IOC session and will lead to positive outcomes for world sports. Air India will operate three flights between India and Ukraine on 22nd, 24th and 26th of this month. Air India said seats are available on these flights and booking is open through Air India booking offices, website, call center and authorized travel agents. In Madhya Pradesh, the 48th Khajurahu Dance Festival will begin today. The week-long festival will conclude on the 26th of this month. Renowned artists from across the country and the world will perform at the festival, which will be inaugurated by Madhya Pradesh Governor Mangubai Patel. The festival will be held beside the famous Khajurahu group of temples, which is a World Heritage Site. It will showcase the cultural landscape of Indian dance styles, art and travel related exhibitions. During the event, the National Kali Das Award will be presented to eminent dancers for the year 2019-20 and 2020-21. The Madhya Pradesh State Rupankar Kala Award will also be presented during the festival. We'll be back after a short break with more news and updates. Jammu Kashmir ke logon ke liye khush khabri. Terra Mount Estates Private Limited taamir kar raha hai Atun Housing Colony. Jahan milenge aapko plots aur aap sajhayenge apne khwabon ke ghar. Pehle phase mein Bagat e Gannipura, Dannihama Pain aur Pattan aur Palhalan ke beech mein milenge plots aasan daamo par. Dusre phase mein Kashmir ke har district mein plot dastiyab hoga. एडवांस पेमेंट के लिए मिलेगा आपको 1% का डिस्काउंट प्लॉट्स होंगे हर तरह की सहूलियत से लेस तो कश्मीर में प्लॉट्स खरीदने के लिए رابطہ करें टेरा माउंट एस्टेट्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड जवाहर नगर श्रीनगर वेलकम बैक केरला कंटिन्यूज टू रिपोर्ट स्टेडी डिक्लाइन इन डेली कोविड-19 केस लोड एंड हायर रिकवरीज the state yesterday recorded 17,086 recoveries and 6,757 fresh cases. Test positivity rate dropped to 10.85%. 16 COVID deaths were reported in the last 24 hours besides 508 previously undocumented COVID-related fatalities, taking the overall toll to 64,053. Kerala's active cases have come down to 85,875. Ladakh Lieutenant Governor R.K. Mathur met Information and Broadcasting Secretary Apurva Chandra in New Delhi. During the meeting, both discussed strengthening of Doordarshan and All India Radio Kendras in Ladakh region and delivery of Ladakhi content for maximum duration. 
They also discuss provisions of DD free dish, TV, and AM FM radios to households in border areas. LG Mathur underlined the importance of strengthening radio services in Ladakh due to its importance, especially for nomads residing in Changthang region. LG Mathur and Apurva Chandra also discussed conducting the second edition of the Himalayan Film Festival. Mathur appealed for INB Ministry help in installing two extra screens at the Sindhu. Sanskriti Kendra Auditorium for the Film Festival and another and other infrastructure. Senior officials from Dur Darshan and All India Radio were also present during the meeting. Kanpur Mayor Pramila Pandey created a controversy today when she was seen clicking pictures and videos inside the polling booth. Pandey shared the photo of the electronic voting machine as she cast the vote during the third phase of UP Assembly poll. Pandey cast her vote at the Hudson School polling booth in Kanpur. She shot a video as she was casting her vote and shared it on several WhatsApp groups. Taking cognizance of the matter, the district magistrate has initiated action against her. An FIR is being lodged against Pramila Pandey under relevant sections for breach of secrecy of voting at Hudson School polling station, the Kanpur district magistrate posted on Twitter. Polling is being held today in 59 assembly seats spread across 16 districts of Uttar Pradesh. This is the third phase of the assembly polls in the state, where elections are to be held in seven rounds. As many as 627 candidates are in the fray in this phase, in which over 2.15 crore people are eligible to vote. Punjab today witnessed a voter turnout of 4.80% till 9 am, while the corresponding number in Uttar Pradesh stood at 8.15%. Voting for the third phase of Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections in 59 Assembly seats began at 7 a.m. on Sunday, while polling in Punjab started at 8 a.m. Punjab is expected to witness a multi-cornered contest among the ruling Congress AAP, SAD BSP Alliance, BJP PLC, SAD Sanyukt and the Sanyukt Samaj Morcha. Over 2.14 crore voters will decide the fate of 1,304 candidates, including 93 women. The voting will start at 8 a.m. and continue till 6 p.m. Among the prominent faces contesting in Punjab are CM Charanjit Singh Chhanni, Punjab Congress Chief Navjot Singh Sidhu, Aam Admi Party's Chief Ministerial Face, Bhagwant Man, former CMs Arminder Singh and Parkar Singh Badal, and Shiromani Akali Dal President Sukhbir Singh Badal. In the third of the seven phase elections in UP, a total of 627 candidates are in the fray, in which over 2.15 crore people are eligible to exercise their franchise. This phase will see Samajwadi Party Chief Akhlesh Yadav contesting from the Karhal Assembly seat in Manipuri district. The BJP has pitted Union Minister SP Singh Bagel from there. The district going to polls in this phase are Hathras, Pirozabad, Ita. Kasganj, Manpuri, Farukhabad, Kanpur, Dehat, Kanpur Nagar, Kanoj, Itawa, Oreya, Lalitpur, Hamirpur, Jalaung, Jhansi, and Mahoba. Polling here will be held from 7 am till 6 pm. Amid reports of a rift among the party's top brass in the Madhya Pradesh Congress, a video of Rajya Sabha MP Digvijay Singh saying 2023 was the last chance for the grand old party has gone viral. In the video, Singh is heard saying the 2023 elections were the last chance for the Congress or the party will never return to power. Surrounded by leaders and workers, the Rajya Sabha MP is seen preaching unity within the Congress. I am standing here, others are here and there. This won't work, says Singh, in an apparent attack on the scattered working approach of the party. I am making it amply clear it's the last election in 2023. If you people don't fight together with honesty, then be prepared to sit at home, he adds, claiming that the party will not return to power and no one will find workers on the ground. The former Madhya Pradesh chief minister is also seen getting angry at people shooting his videos. Singh was addressing party workers in Ratlam soon after Congress and BJP got engaged in a war of words over the viral video. That's all for today. Keep watching Disbar 24.